Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a part two of my most viewed video on my channel. Before we get into the video, make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn post notifications on. When I hit 5 or 10k, I'll be creating like a, a gaming channel for games other than Roblox as it's easier to come up with uh, ideas for content and stuff like that. So I can keep uploading uploading more often for you guys. Other than that, let's get straight into the video. In a lot of games there's uh, in, on Roblox, there's a lot missing in the outskirts of the map, which adds a lot more detail than you think to the map. For example, like this would be the map, they'll just leave it like that and then have nothing on the outskirts. Whereas I put like terrain and then have assets like these, which is a, technically an invisible part, but with the with an image of Google of a tree. So I type in tree uh, PNG on on Google or bush PNG on Google, and um, I put it on a uh, on an invisible uh, part with full transparency just so it's well optimized from a distance you won't even be able to tell that it's just a flat image that you can't see from behind as long as your character can only face it from the front you should be fine now to do this there's two methods if you want if you want them to be curved then uh, to add a little bit more detail you need to do a little uh, there's an, uh, an extra step for it um, for the tree all I did was add a part made it invisible, made the transparency one, and then added a texture. And then with the texture, I've, I've got my image off my, uh, wherever I saved it. And then you have to adjust the studs per tile, depending on the size of your part. And basically you have to work out what's the perfect size for it. I worked out that this is 18 by 18 and it's perfect, fits perfectly onto the part. Now to add this bend in your, uh, in your like small shrubs and stuff like that it, this method can work in stuff like leaves for your trees and anything like that popular games uh, use this method to make like tree branches and stuff like that but to curve it basically what you need to do is you want to go to blender and once you're on blender you want to it's really simple you click add mesh and then plane once you add the plane you want to rotate it by 90 degrees um, by pressing R and then I believe it's X yeah and then what you want to do is click this little arrow here oh wait no this this little arrow here and you wanna enable where it says face orientation now the red part is going to be the invisible part that you can't see behind here so we want to make sure the the bush like bends the correct way so what you want to do is add press control R to add loop cuts and once you've done that you want to create this kind of natural bush curve shape like so and then once you've done that you want to um, curve it and to do so you want to select these edges here or these vertices here and then enable smooth select like this by clicking this button pull the arrow in and it creates a bit of a curve now you can click file uh, export as an FBX and then once you export it you can put it into studio to import it into studio you click view asset manager you click this small button here and then you find your model wherever you saved it and then it should import the model will appear down here and you just double click it and it will appear into your scene. The next thing I'd recommend is creating modular pieces when you're when you're creating roads or different houses and stuff to keep a consistent style you want to create modular um, pieces. What modular pieces basically are are um, essentially a set of uh, for example a house you have different types of walls, maybe wall, a wall with a window, a wall with two windows, a blank wall, uh, stuff like that. And then you can literally just copy and paste them and then just create a house based off all these models you've created previously. Now I stole this um, from the toolbox just to show you guys, but if you make your own version of this, you can create um, unique structures and keep a consistent style, which is um, very effective to create a nice looking map. This literally works with anything, whether it's like houses, pipes, roads, or anything like that. Essentially, what you do is you would connect them like this. It's really simple, really fast, and you can kind of copy and paste them, and then they attach super easily, so you don't have to create like individual kind of assets. It makes a really 
really fast as well. The next thing I'd recommend is using uh, your own textures rather than the default Roblox ones. As you can see here, I have a wood texture from Roblox and a brick texture from Roblox here. And then I have one that I found from uh, a certain website, which I'm going to link in the description and show you guys in a second. But the difference is insane from just getting an image of uh, a certain website. And it just had, makes your games more unique rather than just using the default materials. And the detail is a lot higher, as you can see. This is the website I use to find my textures uh, if I want to use some free ones. It's literally just called textures.com. I'll leave the link in the description. But essentially, if you, when you click on library, you have a huge library of uh, free textures that you can literally just download. You have different bricks. You can find plastics. You can find roads. You can find rocks, rust, and all these you can just download for free and use them in your games to make them look a lot, um, a lot more aesthetically pleasing. So I'd highly recommend you guys use these things. The last thing I recommend is you study different maps from games outside of Roblox. For example, if you make an FPS game, um, I would recommend uh, looking at CSGO or um, Valorant maps, as these maps are very um, effective and they're designed with a lot of detail in them. If you can figure out or do your research as to why maps are designed a certain way, or play them yourselves, you'd work out um, essentially how to make your own maps and how to make them uh, very effective in your own way. I put together a quick example of using some of these uh, tips that I showed you guys in this video. So essentially you'd have your main map here within this border and then you'd have your outskirts of you know your terrain and your, your flat assets. If I look at it from this side you can't see anything but that's irrelevant because you're only going to be inside the map. So it, it, it doesn't make a difference and they're well optimized because it's literally just a, um, a transparent image. But anyways, I hope this enjoy. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope this helped. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn post notifications on. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.